Okay, Assalamualaikum and hey, what's up guys? So, for today's lecture, we are going to cover about cationic polymerization, which is one of the chain growth polymerization. Okay. The lesson outcomes. So, uh, upon the completion of this chapter, students should be able to write the initiators for cationic uh, polymerization. So, in cationic polymerization we have uh, three types of initiator so uh, we're going to look at that initiator one by one and second describe the factors affecting the polymerization process write the chemical reaction as usual um, for cationic polymerization differentiate between cationic and anionic okay this is the major differences between free radical polymerization in ionic polymerization so for free radical polymerization that we have covered before this it involves several initiators such as uh, peroxide hydroperoxide which is for example the use of bpo okay and also uh, aibn redox initiator photo initiator but for ionic polymerization we have cationic and anionic so in ionic polymerization it is carried out in the presence of counter ion and the mechanism of the polymerization may be strongly influenced by the counter ions. It is more complex than free radical polymerization, more versatile, but only um, for several monomers, and which is limited types of monomer can be used, can be polymerized by ionic polymerization. While for free radical, it is carried out in the presence of radical polymerization influenced by the radical and can be used to polymerize variation of monomers. Okay, like uh, radical polymerization, cationic polymerization also occur by chain mechanism. So in contrast to radical polymerization, which is a free radical, the chain carriers are carbonium which is the positively charged carbon species. There is no chain termination by combination since the growing chain, which is carbon ion, repel each other electrostatically because of their light charges. And chain termination occurs only by reaction of the growing chain and with substances such as water, alcohol, acid and amine. So in cationic polymerization, it can lead to stereoregular structure. Okay, cationic polymerization are usually conducted in solution and often at low temperature. Typically negative 80 to negative 100 degrees C, which provides satisfactory polymerization rates. And the choice of solvent is important because of the relation of solvent to the intimate association between cation and counter ion. So a tight association will prevent monomer insertion during propagation. And the termination reaction are unlikely in very pure cationic system, but slight traces of impurities can exert significant effect because of the great reactivity of the propagating species okay so uh, the main um, differences between free radical and uh, ionic polymerization the rate of polymerization and the molecular weight generally increases with increasing the polarity and dielectric constant of the solvent so solvent play the important roles in this types of polymerization so um, slide yang mula-mula ni dia cerita general pasal ionic polymerization saja. and the main reason for this behavior is due to the effect of solvent polarity and the co-catalytic action of the solvent for example of type of solvent use is toluene, chlorotoluene, nitrotoluene, cyclohexene and so on Some cationic polymerization process so quickly, which is flash polymerization, even after dilution, that conversion is already complete after a few minutes, which is, for example, isobutylene monomer. Cationic polymerization are very sensitive to impurities. So, how can the impurities affect the polymerization? 
it can act as a co-catalyst by accelerating the polymerization or as inhibitors, which is to uh, uh, stop the point to slow down the reaction process. It can enhance the chain transfer or chain termination and also can cause a lowering of the DP. So how to minimize the problem? By careful purification and drying of all materials and equipment. So unlike free radical and anionic polymerization, initiation in cationic polymerization employs a true catalyst that is restored at the end of the polymerization. So the catalyst does not become incorporated into the terminated polymer chain. Okay, we have three types of initiator. Protonic acid, stable cation, and Lewis acid. Okay, so for cationic polymerization, the reactive portion of the chain and it carry a positive charge during the process of chain growth. So this active center, it can be either unpaired cation or they can be cation that are paired and associated closely with an ion. So an ion is a counter ion. Right. First, we will look at the protonic acid first. So what is protonic acid? It is a chemical species which can act as a source of proton to initiate a polymerization. So for example, sulfuric acid which is H2SO4 okay, perchloric acid HC HClO4 okay, so it has a source of proton which is uh, H plus and uh, minus okay, so HClO4 H plus and O4 only minus okay. the efficiencies of protonic acid depend upon the polarities of the media and the reaction condition the stronger the protonic acid, the higher the reaction rate and the resultant degree of polymerization. So if we uh, use the high uh, strong acid, which is uh, H2SO4 compared to perchloric acid, so it will lead to produce high degree of DP, which is degree of polymerization. Okay, protonic, which is bronze acid, initiate cationic polymerization by protonation of the olefin. This is the general uh, reaction. Okay, protonic acid, this is the reaction with uh, monoma. So, it will produce positive and negative charge. So, the example, HCl, HBr, H2SO4, HSL, HClO4. Bronsted acid involves the transfer of an H plus ion or proton, HCl and H2SO4 are acid that have hydrogen that can be released as proton. So they are called as protonic acid. So the protonic acid helps increase the concentration of the hydronium ion of water. For stable cation, it is used for reactive monomer. Uh, such as vinyl ether. Okay, so this is the structure of tropylium chloride. So the cation must be used in low concentration to ensure complete dissociation from their respective counter ion. Right. For Lewis acid, so Lewis acid example of the Lewis acid. Or Al Cl3, Bf3, Al Br3, okay, titanium tetrachloride, and so on. So for Lewis acid initiators, it um, required a co-initiator such as protic acid, H2O alcohol, and alkylate or an organic halogen compound. So for Lewis acid, uh. This is types of initiator, BF3. It must be um, together with the presence of the co-initiator. Okay. So, initiator mesti bergabung dengan co-initiator. Co-initiator ni sama ada water ataupun um, protein acid ataupun um, alkyl halide. 
compound. Okay. Ataupun organic halogen compound. So, bila ada reaction dua ni barulah dia boleh produce. Baru dia boleh produce a reactive portion of chain N. Okay. So, um, biasanya kita akan guna water lah. Water is the best choice uh, because um, other than water, for example, CCL4, um, ROH and so on, it will affect the molecular weight which is uh, not good. So, Lewis acid is formally defined as an electron acceptor, for example, proton, uh, boron trichloride or aluminium trichloride. So, kalau kita tengok struktur, um, apa nama ni dia punya mekanism dekat sini. Ini adalah step initiation. Okay. Initiation di mana? Yang ni initiator. Dia akan react dengan um, co-catalyst. Okay. Co-catalyst ni sebagai act as a proton donor. Okay. Sebab dia ada H kat sini. So, H ni dia akan jadi positive charge and BF3. Uh, akan berada dalam kurungan ni bersama dengan O lagi satu H and make sure dia ada negative charge kat sini right. so biasanya kita akan guna water lah eh, untuk bagi senang reaction untuk reaction uh, initiator initiation biasa kita akan guna water so untuk lain-lain selain daripada water kita tak payah nak pening-pening bagi senang-senang je alright next slide Types of monomer, um, aliphatic monomer, okay, only isobutylene provides the requisite carbocation stability for carbonic polymerization. So, which is, uh, yang ada double bond dia, yeah? aromatic monomer, okay, yang ada benzene ring, um, vinyl ether, okay, particularly reactive, okay, ini contoh some monomers with the structure. Okay, the mechanism of cationic polymerization, it involves uh, initiation, propagation and also termination. Same with other mechanism. But uh, the formation of active center for uh, first time in cationic polymerization, you must um, Illustrate the dissociation of initiator. Okay. Untuk cationic polymerization, kita hanya fokus dekat Lewis acid sahaja. So, mekanism dia melibatkan Lewis acid which is BF3, ALCL3 ataupun ALBR3 initiator. Protonic acid dengan stable ke ion, kita tak tak apa. Kita skip yang tu. Sebab kita ambil yang senang je. Okay. For dissociation ni, dissociation of initiator, For Lewis, uh, Lewis acid, uh, BF3 ni initiator kan. Tapi untuk Lewis acid, you must have a co-catalyst. So, we choose water as a co-catalyst. And it will produce the uh, proton, um, which is ion pair of positive eh, and negative charge. This is the step of dissociation of initiator. And for association of initiator, ion pair reaction of initiator, will be uh, reacted with the monomer. Okay. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure here. So, uh, in the association, the monomer will give the uh, proton. Okay, I will show in the next slide. Okay, like this. Okay, monomer here. We will transfer the hydrogen, which is proton, to the charge uh, active here. Okay, so carbon, tengok the initiation take place by uh, one electron transportation. So, uh, they occur as a uh, direct result of oxidation of radical. Okay, so they can also take place through electron transfer interaction involving electron donor of the monomer. Okay, kita tengok kat sini, um, monomer ni, dia donate kan dia punya proton satu ke sini. Okay. So, the carbon cation can form from olefin in a variety of ways. Uh, one way is through the direct addition of cation like a proton. 
which is 